Hi, it's Nicole, and today I'm going to be reviewing Amélie Nottom's Stupeur et Tremblement, also known as Fear and Trembling in English. This is my fourth Amélie Nottom now, and I think it is probably her most famous book, if not her most famous book that was translated into English from the original French. Three out of the four Amélie Nottom books that I've read so far have been at least somewhat semi-autobiographical. We follow a 25-year-old Amélie as she starts a one-year contract as an entry-level translator for a company called Yumimoto. And despite an early childhood in Japan and fluency in Japanese, she's having a hard time um, integrating into work culture and understanding work politics in Japan. Amelie Nottom's writing in general tends to be quite humorous, pointing out really ironic situations um, or strange things that people do, or emphasizing awkwardness, usually of the protagonist. This story kind of covers enduring, relentless, unjust and potentially pointless trials while navigating social awkwardness in a place where the barrier of culture kind of makes it even more pronounced. What we start to see when we have this anomaly come into um, this perfectly working, well-oiled machine of a Japanese company starts to highlight a lot of the peculiarities and contradictions within Japanese society that otherwise would go unnoticed or just be considered normal. Another book that I'm reading at the moment on Marxism talks about how um, everything comes in contrasts, so there can't be a day without a night, there can't be a hair without a there, and we have these two main characters that really do work in opposition to each other in such a way that they bring out the worst in each other. There's also a theme of resistance and that kind of plays in with a course that I'm doing at the moment that talks about how resistance um, sort of relies on its context in a way. So something that could be resistance in one system might not necessarily be resistance when put in a different context. There's kind of a small example of this when at one point um, Amelie is offered some chocolate but it's um, green and she's kind of disgusted by this idea. It's explained to her that it's actually a special melon flavored chocolate from the Hokkaido region and she politely declines. This is seen as out of order and she eventually submits after the offer is posed several more times with growing anger and decreasing politeness. In other situations some things are seen as resistance when actually that's not quite what's going on. For example she might be working on a task and she might do it badly and that's seen as like um, maybe she's trying to sabotage the company and all of these kinds of things when really she's just not really good at doing that particular job and it was interesting seeing how different characters would react to her mistake and how that changed depending on their status and their relationship to her and what her failure or success in different areas meant to them. I'm not sure why I didn't want this one to be my first Amelie Nottom, even though I'm pretty sure it's her most famous one, but I do really like her writing and I think she is quite funny, but sometimes she does kind of throw me off a little bit and I'm not sure if I'm okay with the way that she jokes about certain things sometimes and I think, oh, is is that funny? I'm not sure. I guess it would be described as quirky or off-kilter, dark humor maybe. And I've actually read a positive review of another book of hers where they talk about how she is politically incorrect sometimes. And while I would agree with that assessment, it's not quite as cut and dry as one would think when you hear something being politically incorrect and then you have a book that's set in a country like Japan being written by a Belgian author you might think there might be some problematic racial undertones or something but that is not the case at all she has nothing but positive things to say about the Japanese people though she is critical about um, some aspects of society and the restrictions in society over there. I think it's fair when she makes these criticisms about the restrictions in that society, though we do have to understand that it is from her perspective and she will have a different perspective probably from a lot of Japanese people as well. But the part that I find to be a little bit um, off-putting, I guess, or kind of I'm not sure how to interpret it or um, this is the part that I think falls into the not quite politically correct kind of arena is whenever she's talking about 
um, fat people because it doesn't necessarily feel like she's making fun of them but I feel like they still are a target of that joke in a way and it's in a way that I'm not completely comfortable with um, but I could just be being too sensitive about it it's not like she has loads of jokes about people it's just that I don't know there are just certain things that come up where I think oh I, I'm not sure if I am okay with that I don't know if that's I don't know if that's okay <laughs> and as far as reading it in French goes because I did read this in French um, I would say that it's appropriate for around a B2 level which I, I think I'm around a B2 level I haven't done an official exam yet but I'm somewhere around there and I think this is absolutely appropriate to tackle if you have around a B2 level in the CEFR um, scale so at first I didn't bother giving a rating in the end I ended up giving it four out of five stars because it was really enjoyable I liked seeing all of the contrasts with um, sort of the expectations of on Japanese people within work and within culture um, I like Amelie Nottom's writing style I do find her generally quite humorous and I would definitely recommend the book and I'm really curious if anybody else has read it whether in French or in English I'd love to hear your opinions down below in the comments I've decided I'm going to be ordering another book from her um, soon, probably after payday, and it's probably going to be Ni Dev Ni Dadem. But if you have any other recommendations, whether from this author or from other French authors that you think I might like, then absolutely leave those recommendations down in the comments below. And um, I'll see you again next time. Bye!